Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 542. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about nine money mistakes. And I really wanted to go over this with you because I found this article, as you know, I love picking out articles for you that I agree with, number one, and follows principles that I have found to be true, but also maybe have a different perspective on it from the same old thing that I talk about. I want you to hear from other people as well. And so there are lots of financial experts that are mentioned in this article, and yet they're talking about a lot of the things that we've talked about on the podcast, a lot of things that... I've tried to reiterate to you and to have you really get clear on. So I'm going to share this article with you from Business Insider. It's called Nine Red Flags, You're Not Building Wealth and How to Fix It. And it was written by Tanza Loudenbach. And it has three bullet points. The first bullet point is most people don't get wealthy by accident, but through intentional habits and tried and true strategies. Now I have to pause there already and say, where have you heard that before? I often say that wealth is something that just about anybody can achieve, but you have to do the right things. You have to take the right steps. You have to stay away from making mistakes. And there are definitely things to do and things not to do. There are specific things that are gonna help you build wealth. And it isn't an accident. It's not just luck. It is something that people take specific steps and do specific things to move in the right direction that increase your wealth. The second bullet point says, you're probably not on the path to a rich future if you're focusing only on saving money, if you live above your means, or if you haven't started investing. Okay, I gotta pause again. (laughs) Because... Wow, when have I said that? If you're just saving money, it's probably not going to work that you'll become a millionaire because you'd have to make millions in order to save millions. You need to have the component of getting your money to work harder for you. And the way to do that is by investing. Now they've also thrown in here living above your means, which is an obvious one. If you're spending more than you're making, that is going to cause problems. But the main point to get from this is that a portion of everything that you make needs to be invested. And once it's invested, that money can work harder for you and start compounding. And it's the compounding that's going to build the wealth for you. Remember step four to wealth, investing in a money engine. Step five is compounding at a high rate. All right, bullet point number three, you can course correct by creating multiple income streams, investing in a retirement account, and making clear financial goals and plans to achieve them. Okay, I think that's a little bit of a version of mindset and also some practical things, opening a retirement account, certainly using tax benefits to your advantage. Those are important things to do. Multiple income streams are not necessarily something everyone wants to do right now because income streams sometimes mean that you're not getting the capital growth that you want. You want to get the compounding while you're young. The income can come later. That would be more like buying a bond, whereas investing in stocks would be something that would be growing your capital. So two different concepts there. Although a lot of people talk about multiple streams of income and how important that is and all of that, I'm going to say compounding your money and not touching it, not getting income is more important because you're leaving the money in the account to let that money that you've left in compound more money. So the money you put in is compounding, the money that it grew to is compounding and the money that would have created income from it is also compounding. So I say, leave it in the account, leave it alone, and don't take the income out until you're ready to retire. 
But let's see what this article says, because there's a lot of interesting points in here. It says, wealth requires building a foundation of good habits, and the earlier you start, the better. Here are nine signs you're probably not yet on the path to a rich future. Number one, you only work hard, not smart. In school, we learn that hard work will get us ahead in life, but that's only half the story, says Rick Edelman, a top financial advisor. If all you do in life is work really hard, you're never going to get wealthy, he said, because it's not enough that you work hard to make money to set some of it aside. Edelman says that to ensure future wealth, you must equally work smart. One way he suggests working smart is investing your money in the stock market or a retirement fund, that is, taking advantage of compound interest so that your money earns money. You can do this without taking a huge amount of risk. You can do this without a lot of effort. You can do this without a lot of time, he said. Yeah, exactly. And I spelled all that out in the Wealth Heiress book. It's not a requirement to have a lot of money if you have time. Remember, we talked about McT, the money compounding in time. Those are the three components of the wealth building formula. You either have money or you have more time, years to compound, or you can compound at a higher rate. If you don't have the time or the years, you need to either put more money in or compound at a higher rate. So whichever one you're lacking, the other ones can compensate for what you're lacking. That's the wealth building formula. And that's exactly what he's describing right there. Number two, you put too much emphasis on saving and not enough on earning. Another way to work smart, increase your earnings, not just your savings. Saving is crucial to building wealth, but you don't want to focus so much on saving that you start neglecting earning. In addition to saving money, we really focus on increasing our income. Eric and Callie Roberge said on a recent episode of their podcast, Beyond Finances, cutting expenses, managing your cash flow, and not giving into lifestyle inflation is important, Callie said. But if you can't increase your income, I think it's always going to be a struggle to get to where you want to go. In some cases, Eric said, spending less on everyday expenses is necessary, but if you've hit a limit and it's possible to earn more money, the benefit will be much greater. The masses are so focused on clipping coupons and living frugally, they miss major opportunities, wrote Steve Seibold, a self-made millionaire in an article for Business Insider. There's no need to abandon practical saving strategies. However, if you want to start thinking like the rich, stop worrying about running out of money and focus on how to make more, Seibold said. Yeah, this is something I've talked a lot about, where if you're focusing on saving more than on earning, that can be an issue. But here's the thing. It doesn't necessarily require a lot of money to build wealth if you're smart with what you do with your money. And that was one of the things that I really wanted to demonstrate and give lots of stories about were particularly women who started with very little money and were able to invest in stocks and end up multimillionaires. And the idea was to show it doesn't always take a lot of money. And the classic example of that was a woman in China who was making a dollar an hour and ended up becoming the richest woman in the world. Now, that doesn't just happen because she's focused on earning a living. Obviously, she formed a business and the business became successful. And it was from there that she grew enormous wealth. But we always have to think about how can we get our money working harder for us and not just about how much we earn, what our hourly rate is, but how can we actually get our money working harder for us? Number three, you buy things you can't afford. If you live above your means, you won't get rich. Even if you start earning more or get a raise, don't use that as justification to give yourself a lifestyle raise, especially when it comes to housing. If you live in a pricey home and neighborhood, you will act and buy like your neighbors. The more affluent the neighborhood, the more its residents spend on almost every conceivable product and service, Thomas J. Stanley wrote in his book, Stop Acting Rich. That's not to say you can't buy nice things or meaningful experiences, but it's difficult to keep building wealth when you keep spending more too. Well, I agree. If you're just trying to keep up with everyone, that's not going to work. Remember, we've talked about spending priorities, establishing what those are, and then matching your spending to your spending priorities. So it's not just about blowing money. It's about putting your money on things that are really important to you. 
And that's where you're going to match your spending with your lifestyle happiness. And, you know, whether that's going on vacation or remodeling your home or what that is, is going to be what's meaningful to you. Saving for your children's college, perhaps. It's what's going to be the most pleasurable thing for you because you've created that as a financial priority. And that can help keep you from just blowing money on things that you don't really need. You know, oftentimes we go somewhere and we think, oh, here's a great bargain. And you didn't really want that before. And all of a sudden you've spent a few thousand dollars perhaps on something very impulsive. So by having spending priorities, that's going to keep you from doing that. Number four, you're content with a steady paycheck. Average people choose to get paid based on time, on a salary or hourly rate, while rich people choose to get paid based on results and are typically self-employed or have multiple income streams. It's not that there aren't world-class performers who punch a time clock for a paycheck, but for most, this is the slowest path to prosperity promoted as the safest, Seibold said. The great ones know self-employment is the fastest road to wealth. While the world class continues starting businesses and building fortunes, the masses almost guarantee themselves a life of financial mediocrity by staying in a job with a modest salary and yearly pay raises, Seibold said. Well, I have documented that about 70% of the wealthy have gotten that way through owning a business or being a professional, and that is a very good way to build wealth. And in this age of entrepreneurship, it's more exciting than ever to take whatever talents you have and create a business around it. And it's less expensive than ever to do that because of the internet, because of just the way everything is set up online. And it's just so much less expensive today than it was even 15 years ago. Number five, you haven't started investing. One of the most effective ways to earn more money over time is to invest it. And the earlier you start, the more money you'll end up with. On average, millionaires invest 20% of their household income each year, Ramit Sethi wrote in his New York Times bestseller, I Will Teach You To Be Rich. Their wealth isn't measured by the amount they make each year, but by how they've saved and invested over time. You don't have to be an expert on finance or use fancy economic jargon to start investing in the stock market. You don't have to come from an affluent family, and you don't even have to earn a massive paycheck. Start by investing in your retirement or a low-cost index fund, and you'll see huge returns in the long run. Yeah, again, you have to start investing and get your money working harder for you so that you can reach those higher rates of compounding, and that's how you're going to build wealth. That's exactly what the Millionaire Action Plan is all about in the Wealth Heiress book. Number six, you're pursuing someone else's dreams and not your own. If you want to be successful, you have to love what you do, and that means determining and pursuing your passion. Too many people make the mistake of chasing someone else's dreams, such as their parents, says Thomas Corley, who spent five years researching self-made millionaires. When you pursue someone else's dreams or goals, you may eventually become unhappy with your chosen profession, he wrote in Change Your Habits, Change Your Life. Your performance and compensation will reflect it. You will eke out a living struggling financially. You simply won't have the passion that is necessary for success to happen. Once you identify what it is you love to do, master it. Honing a skill is our strongest weapon when it comes to building wealth and career satisfaction, according to Cal Newport, an associate professor of computer science at Georgetown University and a best-selling author. You could generate more money. You could generate much more autonomy and leverage over how you generate that money. You get much more flexibility about how and when you work, Newport said. Yes, I happen to believe we're all here for a purpose and a reason, and we've all been given skills and talents. And those things that you love to do, your passion, those things that you would do for free, that you love to work on, and your hobbies, those are all things that can possibly be turned into businesses. One of the things I wrote about was the fact that this woman actually created this goop and it was kind of a green slime and she has made so much money with her slime that she has been able to buy herself a home and start a business and support herself 100% on YouTube through creating this slime. So it doesn't even have to make sense to possibly be a good business. This is the thing in this day and age. People 
think that it has to be something super serious or it has to be something that is tried and true in the past. No, there's all kinds of people making money on crazy things because they're passionate about it and that passion comes through and they can actually monetize it. So try to take the limitations of your beliefs away and think about things that are your hobbies and things that you love to spend time doing because you might be able to monetize that. In this day and age, it's quite possible. Number seven, you don't have goals for your money. If you want to build wealth, the process will be easier and probably more enjoyable if you have a clear, specific goal in place. Do you want to buy a house, live abroad, travel once a month, enjoy a cushy retirement? Write down these goals and make a savings plan to achieve them. Rich people choose to commit to attaining wealth. It takes focus, courage, knowledge, and a lot of effort. But it's possible if you have precise goals and a clear vision, said T. Harbecker, a self-made millionaire. The number one reason most people don't get what they want is that they don't know what they want, he said. Rich people are totally clear that they want wealth. I agree with Harv there. It is so important to know what you want because wealth begins with a decision. Once you decide that's what you want, then we can work on the steps of what you need to do to achieve it. It makes it so much easier. But if people don't decide that they want to take some time and learn what they need to learn in order to become wealthy, well, then it's not just going to happen. It's not just luck. It's not a miracle. It's literally things that you do step by step that are going to create wealth for you. And you either learn those things and do them or you don't. Number eight, you spend first and save what's left over. If you want to get rich, pay yourself first. What most people do when they earn a dollar is pay everyone else first, David Bach, a self-made millionaire, wrote in The Automatic Millionaire. They pay the landlord, the credit card company, the telephone company, the government, and on and on. Rather than spending and then saving whatever is left over, save first. Set aside an hour a day of your income in an emergency fund, 401k, or other savings account. And make the process automatic, Box says. This takes the effort out of manually saving and ensures your money will grow exponentially over time, thanks to compound interest. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I've said save 20% if you can. Pay yourself first, of course, put that 10% automatically in another account, a separate checking account that is your savings plan or your emergency fund. And if you can up that number to 20%, do that, including what you're doing with your 401k and other savings. So try and save, but then use that savings to invest so that money is working for you and not just sitting there, not working for you. Number nine. You believe getting rich is out of your reach. The average person believes being rich is a privilege awarded only to lucky people, Seibold wrote. The truth is, in a capitalist country, you have every right to be rich if you're willing to create massive value for others. Start asking yourself, why not me, he says. Next, start thinking big. Rich people set high expectations. Why not a million? End of article. Well, I think that goes back to mindset again. If you don't think you can achieve it, you're not going to achieve it. But also, it just is about learning the right tools and steps. And I happen to believe that people that even don't make a lot of money can become wealthy. And you don't have to start a business. It is helpful. It is something that is one way to compound at a high rate. I mean, there are people that I've written about that are compounding at thousands of percents. And when you look at people that have started businesses, in order to create the wealth that they've created, that's the rate that they're actually compounding at. I mean, it's insane. But I did quote that in the Wealth Heiress book about people who are actually making hundreds of percent and some people thousands of percent in their businesses. So it is possible to get to those compounding rates. Now, having said that, you don't have to start a business, but you do have to invest. You do have to get your money to a higher compounding rate in order to get to seven figures. And that's where most people sort of drop the ball. They either just try to save their way there or think they can be frugal enough to make it happen. Again, that's a very rare situation for someone who's making millions of dollars a year who can save millions. The more common method is for people 
to invest and get their money working harder for them, whether that's in stocks, whether that's in real estate, your own business, some other investments, whatever that might be. And I also think it puts the wind at your back if you pay attention to cycles and see what cycle we're in and what's really working currently in the economy. There's different points in time where we're in a high inflation scenario, where one asset is looking like the right investment, or right now we're in a low inflation scenario and financial assets tend to do better. Different assets do better in different cycles. For example, years ago when we were in a high inflation scenario, commodities like oil were doing very well. Now we're in a very low inflation scenario and things more like financial assets are doing better. So let's go back and summarize these nine mistakes that people make with their money. Number one, you only work hard, not smart. Number two, you put too much emphasis on saving and not enough on earning. Number three, you buy things you can't afford. Number four, you're content with a steady paycheck. Number five, you haven't started investing. Number six, you're pursuing someone else's dreams, not your own. Number seven, you don't have goals for your money. Number eight, you spend first and save what's left over. And number nine, you believe getting rich is out of your reach. If you're looking for a roadmap of what to do, check out the Wealth Heiress book. Whether you're a man or a woman, you will enjoy this book because money has no gender. It's just that the examples in the book are women. The principles are there. The steps to do are the same. Men are loving this book. And it tells you step-by-step exactly what to do for your millionaire action plan. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, please hit the subscribe button and you'll be updated as soon as new podcasts are available. And don't forget, we still have the review contest going. You have an opportunity to win 25 prizes. Your chances to win are really good. There are 11 of the Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audios valued at $197, 11 of my Wealth Heiress books personalized by me, and three opportunities to have a wealth mentoring session with me valued at $500. All you need to do is leave a review on iTunes that gets your name in the drawing five times, a book review on Amazon gets your name in the drawing seven times, and if you do both, your name goes in the hat 10 times and winners will be announced on the first podcast in April. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.